Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. In today's video, I am going to talk about attribute in C Sharp. Attribute is used for providing metadata to a class, method, property, etc. Metadata is nothing but information or some data about the data. That's essentially what the metadata is. It's a meta information. The main use of attribute is when we use reflection to query a type through an attribute. That is the primary usage of an attribute. We can apply multiple attribute to a class or method. So as a normal or as a standard attribute, the way we can implement an attribute for a class is we declare it within the square bracket and we can give the attribute name. So a very common attribute that we always use is serializable. So we can just use this attribute and this indicates the framework that this class is serializable. And apart from that, you might have used different type of attributes in your experience. But this is a standard way of using attribute to a class. Now, apart from the out of box attribute, we can create our own custom attributes. And that is where things can get a little interesting. Attributes, when we define or declare an attribute, it is always declared as a class. So we have to create a class which will be derived from the base attribute class. Once we do that, that attribute is a candidate for attribute and the naming of the attribute always suffixed with attribute. So let's say I want to create an attribute class and let's say this attribute is test attribute. So I can define public class test attribute and we are going to derive it from the attribute class and once we define a class like this now this is a candidate for attribute so we can just define and now we have the test attribute available for us to use now for any attribute including custom attribute we can have constructor and public members and those contra constructor and public member can be used to pass into the attribute just like an argument to a function. For example, if I declare a constructor here and let's say the constructor takes a string, let's say name and we can define this name can assign a private field for this name and once we do that now here as you can see it is showing a red squiggly because there is no argument passed it expects an argument string so here now we can say attribute test that's the name and now you can see it has accepted that. Now here, if we have a public member, let's say public, and let's say this is quantity, so int quantity. Now here, if we come again, we can specify quantity. And as you can see, it is showing quantity as a property and we can say 10. Now, this is how we can define properties as well as constructor and those can be passed into the attribute as just like function parameter. Now, the next thing you would ask is what is the use of creating this? So as I mentioned, when we create a attribute, it can be used using reflection 
to look into if an attribute is applied to a type. So for example, if we want to query all the attributes of this type, we can get test from that. And from test, we can find out, for example, what is the value of quantity. And if we expose the name, let's say, we expose the name this way, then we can get the name also and print it out. So if I have to show that, I can go here and let's just move out the code from the collections example. And now what we can do is we can do var attributes equal to type of and here for the class we can give the attribute example it's the name of the class and we have to add the c sharp basic namespace for that dot get custom attributes and this method has to overload one is the type of the attribute and if it inherits and just bool inherit the inherit is essentially if we set it as true it serves this member in the entire instant chain so we're just going to set it as true which is okay we don't have any inheritance here and then what we can do is we can do for each attribute in attributes and here we can do if attribute is and we want to see if the attribute is our test attribute so we can say if attribute is test attribute then we want to do something and then we can say var att value is equal to we can typecast attribute as test attribute and then we can do a console dot right line and here can do name as value dot name and quantity as dot quantity. So that's all we have to do. And then let me actually comment this out. So now, as you can see here, what we are essentially doing is we are using the type, so type of attribute example, then we are get, we are calling the get custom attributes, which is part of the system dot reflection namespace. And from this one, we are going to get all the custom attributes. And for each custom attributes that we got, we'll see if the custom attribute is of type test attribute. And if it is of type test attribute, then we will cast that into test attribute. And then we are going to use console.writeline to print out the name and the quantity from the attribute. That's essentially what we are trying to do. Now, let me run this example. And if I run, you can see it has printed name is attribute test, quantity is 10, which is the value we have passed here. Name is attribute test, quantity is 10. Now if we change here the name, hello attribute and 
quantity as 20 and rerun the application you will see the same thing would be reflected in the output and now we can see hello attribute and quantity is 20. So this is in a nutshell what attribute is just to reiterate attribute can be used against class or functions or properties inside of a class and they are mainly used by reflection to identify and determine certain sort of logic. So this is a metadata of a class so we can use that to do something with the class. When we define an attribute, attribute itself can have its own attribute which defines what type of attribute it is. So for that we can use an attribute called attribute usage. An attribute usage has attribute targets so we can define that yeah the target of the attribute is class or it can be a struct or a field or a delegate or a return value. We can define different type of attributes and we can just see say all constructor delegate and so on and so forth. So here if we just change this from cast to field then what is going to happen is now in here we can see there is an error because the test attribute is declared only for field so it cannot be used for a class. So let me just change it back to class so that we can run this application and apart from the attribute target as you can see we can have inherit and also there is something called allow multiple which is boolean. So if we say allow multiple is equal to false then what is going to happen the default value of allow multiple is if it is true then more than one instance is allowed to be specified otherwise false and default is false. So now if we try to do this you'll see that it is throwing an error and same if we don't have anything because that's the default but here if we come back and say allow multiple is equal to true then this error is going to go away and as you can see the red squiggly is gone so at this point in time if we run this application again we can see we got two output now hello, att hello attribute quantity is 20 and another one and quantity is 0. I misspelled another one but that was what I meant another one quantity is 0. So this is in a nutshell what attribute is all about and as you can see it can be really handy when we want to use it with reflection. So that is all I wanted to cover for today's video. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you are new to my channel and if you think you are getting value out of my channel, please subscribe to my channel. And thanks so much for watching this video.